Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna give you a glimpse inside of how to make this. This is either a shop stool, a shop cart, you name it. It's got multiple uses. It's a very versatile thing to make. And guess what, guys? I use something other than plywood. <laughs> so join me if you want to see how we did it. And also, this little design feature right here, it has a trick up its sleeve. And stay tuned to see how we did it. Hey everybody, welcome back. And if it's your first time here, welcome to you as well. Let's just jump into this by taking a piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch, ripping it to 14 inches, and then cutting four pieces. Two pieces are 14 by 14. The other two are 16 by 14. I'm gonna install them all together in a box using only butt joints and brads for the time being. But then I'm gonna come back with some countersunk screws to give this a little more rigidity, a little more strength, because yes, I am gonna be sitting on this, moving around the shop quite a bit. So we're gonna add some strength with these countersunk screws. I found a piece of half inch plywood scrap that I'm then gonna cut to three quarters of an inch, double it up and cut it to the length I need to make the drawer slides. To make sure these drawer slides are completely level and even with each other, I've chosen to take four pieces cut to the same length, clamp them to the sides and attach each of them with glue and brads. And honestly, making this drawer could not be simpler. I'm simply using the reference marks of the actual carcass I've made so far, cutting these pieces to length, and they are just a little bit shy of the actual width of the piece, giving me a little wiggle room for the drawer to slide in and out. It's at this point, I'm gonna use a piece of walnut that I've had in the shop for quite a while. It's about one inch in thickness, and I'm gonna cut it to rough dimensions first before I take it over to the joiner and planer and mill it to the correct size. Now the jointer is a fabulous tool. When you need it, you need it, right? But I don't always use it all the time. So I made this cover to go over the top to give me an extra horizontal surface in the shop. I actually made a video on a slight variation of how I made this. It'll be linked down below as well if you wanna check that out. Now, after jointing one edge, we're gonna go ahead and start planing this through the thickness planer to about three quarters of an inch in thickness, giving me a butter soft, smooth surface. This is a helical head planer and I absolutely love it. Such a great addition to the shop. Now onto the table saw to cut these pieces to the right dimension. One more cost cut and we are good to go and we have a couple of drawer faces made from yes, not Baltic birch, but actual hardwood, walnut. Now I just sketched out a slight design for a little relief to put your hand in to grab the drawer. As you can see, one side is higher than the other. I'm gonna transfer that rough cut onto the second piece, come back to the bandsaw, cut it out just like so. Remember this off cut. I'm gonna put it aside for now, use it a little bit later. But until then, we're gonna take a series of clamps to make a makeshift vise, getting these pieces nice and smooth and level with each other. And now I have a couple of drawer faces that are gonna be good to go for this project. I then found a piece of quarter inch pre-finished plywood that I'm gonna use for the actual drawer bottom. I'm gonna scuff up the edges, then put some glue and brads as you see here, attaching it thusly, flipping it over, sanding it smooth, giving it a nice hand chamfer on all sides, breaking all surfaces, that way it's nice and easy to touch. I'm gonna to repeat that same process then on the finished drawer faces. A little hand sanding goes a long way, giving these things a nice soft touch. And now it's time to put them on the drawer and make the installation happen. So I'm using just a few squeeze clamps to put these in place temporarily. I'm then gonna come back with some inch and a quarter screws and go ahead and permanently attach each drawer face to either side of the drawer. So remember that off cut from the bandsaw? Here it is, and I'm gonna go ahead and try to make a design choice, a functional yet aesthetically pleasing element. Here goes nothing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut it down to size, take it over to the disc sander, get rid of all the bandsaw marks and kind of sand it down to the proper depth that I need. I'm then gonna take it back to the crosscut sled, cut it in half, but let me explain. All right, I'm gonna bring you in here just for a second to show you what I was thinking with this design. As you can see, the drawer is able to be pulled from either side. Now, <clears throat> I want this to be able to lock in place, you know, basically not just fall out. So I need that to happen on both sides. So it needs to lock here and there. So what I've come up with, and I've tried to make this as aesthetically pleasing as possible, I've taken an offcut of the actual walnut that we've been using for the drawer faces, and I'm going to attach it. This is all temporary for now. I'm gonna attach it 
right there. So if you can see this, you still get the aesthetic of the kind of wavy line that I was wanting to achieve. Yet when you pull this out, it actually gets stuck on the high spot on the other side. And then when you close it, the low spot here is able to clear it and we're good to go. So that's the design choice I've used. Hopefully it works. Let's install it and see what happens. Well, here goes nothing. I'm using the glue and CA glue trick here. Essentially, the wood glue is gonna permanently bond this, but the CA glue is gonna hold it in place, give me a temporary clamp, and then I'm gonna repeat the same process on the other side, and then we're good to go. A little activator as well to kind of speed up that process, but there she is, complete. A little hand sanding, and honestly, I'm hoping this works. I'll let it dry for about two or three hours before I give this a go. And lo and behold, <laughs> I'll be darned, a functional aesthetic design choice actually works and I am super pleased with how this turned out. Well, I could call that complete. It could be an end table, it could be a nightstand, but I want this to have some mobility. So I wanna thank my friends at Rockler for sending me these locking inline skate casters. And one of the cool parts about this, now I know these aren't for everyone, but this modern touch is something that I'm gonna go ahead and install in the shop. But one of the cool parts about these is that they come with all of the hardware you need, meaning the screws, all 16 of them to install them to any surface. So thank you Rockler for this. Definitely a good touch with the screws. A link is in the description if you wanna get a set for yourself. And here we go with the installation. So with the casters on, it is now time to turn our attention to the final finishing touches of putting on some finish and also getting everything sanded to 240 grit and then boiled linseed oil is gonna be the finish of choice. I'm gonna do a couple of coats over the entire piece. And as you can see here, it really does make the grain and the color of this walnut really shine. Now again, this is a very utilitarian piece. However, adding a couple of features along with plywood as you can see, it gives you a pretty cool modern look, and I think it's very beautiful. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining me for this project, and as we wrap things up this week, I'm going to explain something that happened to me and my mindset about making in general, just by making this pretty unassuming shop seat, stool, cart, whatever you want to call it. So what happened? Well, yes, I'm using Baltic Birch for this, and yes, I did use some walnut, and I did realize that there are other materials out there <laughs> besides Baltic Birch. So using this walnut, what happened was, well, it made me come up with a design element that I didn't think I had in me. And this is a small element, don't get me wrong, this is nothing earth shattering, but this little aesthetic piece right here, which I think looks pretty nice. You've got your hand holds, so you can actually pull this drawer out, and you've got this to line up, and everything kind of flows, and the lines look good, at least in my opinion. But what it did was, it challenged me to make a drawer that would lock on both sides. This happens on the other side as well. So the low side and the high side, this same thing is reversed on the other side. And that was a small design element, but it was huge when it came together. After I finally saw it work, kind of like this aha moment came out and said, you need to be working with something other than Baltic Birch. So I think I'm going to. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Let me give you one more maker board update as well. Um, I usually feature a featured maker on YouTube. However, I'm expanding this to Instagram as well. So this week, I typically don't talk about them, but I gotta pay these guys some mad respect. Clickspring, Chris, you are by far a pioneer in this space, in my opinion. What you do on this, platform is quite amazing. If you don't know this gentleman from down under, he is an unbelievable Australian machinist and I'm not even going to spoil what he does. Just go check him out. He'll be linked below. And then on Instagram, Steve Mills, aka Ventari. This guy, I always tell him that I want to be him when I grow up. He has got some of the most, well, I'm not going to spoil this either. Uh, let's just say he's an RC plane slash flying object enthusiast and he uses CNC's and laser cutters to make all kinds of stuff. Go check him out as well. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Chris, this has been A Glimpse Inside, and we'll see you on that next video. Take care.